let's start let's start with the B zero two zero zero then. Oh, I I guess the recycler. I guess I should probably say the episode that we're reviewing today is episode B zero two in the N plus plus tab. <laughs> it's be, be a good start. I'm talking with Musgrub today. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Toaster's podcast on N plus plus levels. Today we will be discussing episode SB zero. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do any kind of an intro in both of the other episodes I've recorded, and I I feel a little silly whenever I edit them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of the hardest things when actually creating stuff like this is just trying to get yourself into that sort of rhythm of making intros and graphics and all the other sorts of things that you need just to sort of keep the flow going between episodes. Right. Anyway, so yeah, let's let's start with Atmosphere Recycler, B0200. It's a really, really nice looking level, especially when you take into account like all the little different things that can happen. Like it's not particularly challenging if you're just going for normal completion, but some of the challenges can get difficult. And the jumps for high scoring are just surprisingly. I know. I remember the uh, jumps for the challenges for T plus specifically. Uh, some of those being a little fun to to figure out. But I also remember speedrunning the B-Row quite a bit. And this is a fun level to do quickly in, like, any form. Yeah, what I like about it is that it's just getting different jumps off curves feels so satisfying when you do it right. Oh, yeah. And it can get you that little bit. And then with the launch pad, you've got the little boost off the launch pad trick that when you're speedrunning, it just feels so sweet when you get it and you launch yourself straight up. Yeah, I think actually and... you touched on curved tiles there. Um, I think curved tiles are kind of underused throughout this game. That's I, I told myself I wouldn't talk about underused things because <laughs> I'll end up just going into my patented <laughs> chain gun rant, so yeah, I mean, the the chain gun drone is, like, I want to say famously underused, but as famous as anything in the end community can be. Um, like, but, uh, but curve tiles, I think, they don't get talked about as much. You can get some really crazy jumps out of those, when they're used right, at least. Yeah, especially when you get the, um get them as a full circle okay just some of the tricks and just momentum stuff you get using full circles is really really like just the speed you can get from doing a proper jump like do double and triples off the curves and then even just perp jumps off curves just feel really really this level as an example one of my favorite jokes I just find really satisfying when I pull off is doing a perp off the first curve and then corner jumping off the edge and then using that to just sort of get the momentum for the rest of the level. <laughs> yeah. You know, a game kind of is at its most fun when you're playing it in a certain way. I mean, that's a very general statement, I think, that doesn't really describe a lot. Um... I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, N++ is at its most fun if you can really get momentum going through a level. Like, there, there are some things that are particularly not fun in this game, and it's always when something has to make you stop. You know? But, uh... We, we will talk about... Oh, yeah. In a sec. Uh, but... Levels like this, where you can get a flow going the whole time, are... They're some of my favorite in the game. Yeah. Like... And when 
they can pull off just some interesting sort of visuals with it at the same time. It just oh, makes yeah. it really nicer. There's like the the mushroom stuff, the broken things. And even the drones, how it's not the um it's not a four by four pattern that you would expect because they only use the three drones in each thing, it just creates a nice little pattern. Yeah, that's that's a really good pattern actually. It's just little things like that which I think make the level design in these games. Until you get to the ones where they like miss a drone or miss a toggle and they're on the pattern and you just sit there like, oh come on. <laughs> oh yeah. So the next level, uh, B0201 is product placement. I know I've been told what this is actually the logo for, but I can never remember what. I believe, and I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I'm sure there are people that are going to say, Toaster, why did you say that? Um, I believe this is product placement for a game called Dyad, which is another game that Sean McGrath worked on. That, that makes sense. I, th that, I think that's right. It sounds familiar. I might check with someone after we finish recording, and if I'm wrong, I'm just going to dub in me saying the correct thing that this is the product placement for. <laughs> yeah, like my my only thing there is that because Mayor and Reagan made all the levels, I'd find it a touch odd. Like if he made this one level, I'd be like, oh yeah, he's. They just let him make the one level with his symbol, but we we know that there's only one level that they didn't make. Right. And it's not, it's paintedly not this one, and it's not in this episode, so it's not. Which itch is just code for I can't remember what the level is. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh... Okay, well, now I'm gonna go on a tangent. I'm pretty sure I know which level it is. Isn't it, uh, E100? Alex Austin's Metaphor of Life? That is the one. Hey. Yeah, like, I'm... Yeah, because I know that it had the name of the creator of the level in it. So, yeah, yes. That is the one I just went. I have such a terrible memory in general why did i know that <laughs> just immediately i knew which level it was i knew where it was <laughs> oh uh, oh brains are a weird thing, thing that, it's that thing that i know the level to look at it and normally i probably would remember which one it is yeah back to uh product placement right this is a great level that shows you just how much levels change via chart. Yes. Because you look at this level and you, you're just like, wow, this is insanely easy, why did they even bother? And then you try G minus minus T minus minus. Yeah. And pretty much anyone who has been doing challenges for a solid length of time will know just how annoying this level is, especially since it's one that you do when you're less skilled, let's be honest. Yeah, I think that there are a lot of levels in the game that are memorable challenge-wise because of how difficult they are, like non plus plus or uh, Irritable Level Syndrome. But then there's a bunch of levels like this that I think people are going to remember, not because it's so hard, but just because it's so hard from when you were still kind of new with the game. Yeah, and because it is a B, it's B-Row, it's episode 2, 
you are trying it relatively early when you're first starting to sort of look for challenges that you can do and then suddenly this is thrown at you and it's very precise jumps that teaches you that the toggles and gold have very very different hitboxes oh yeah so it's like you do you'll do the t minus ones challenge fairly easily but you would just be stuck on d minus ones yeah because you're just not used to trying to avoid those hitboxes yet and it's just also a neat one of how G++, C++ is also very different. It's not very hard, but just a, it makes you do jumps that you just would never ever do right. in a normal completion. I think that uh, one of the things that this game is so good at is teaching you stuff early on. Um, and this level is just a great example of that. I mean, just from what you've been saying about, uh, you know, teaching you about gold hitboxes versus toggle hitboxes, teaching you about challenges and how they can change the level. This is, I think, a very, very good early game level in that way. It's, they're, they're, re they're relatively simple. Like, there's not much really to it outside of just how interesting that one can be for all the challenges. Yeah. And the neat little easter egg of whatever it is product placement for, and I'm sure we, we will be told. <laughs> right. So the next Re level... Reset. Next level is... Uh, Karis Hell. It took me a second to get the joke. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit that because because I pronounce that carouse, I've only just got. I think I wouldn't have got it. Like I, I just read it in my head as like carouse hell, except I misread it as carousel hell, and that's yeah. that's the only reason I it connected for me. Yeah, like you saying it just then has just made me realize that that is what they were going for and how it also just makes sense. Yeah. Um, this level's okay. It's the one that I was alluding to earlier of talking to a bit later of just... I play it and I want nothing more than to beat that first laser cycle. Oh yeah, it's terrible. But you can't do it. You've got to wait that first cycle so you've got to sit there for that half second and when you've got a speed runner's mentality you always just forget and you always go straight into the yeah um high scoring wise this is fairly easy to max looks like you and i are both in the top 20 um which is yeah. Actually, a little surprising. Laser levels often seem kind of hard to max because the laser hitboxes can be so weird. Yeah, I'm honestly a touch surprised that there isn't an extra frame here, and perhaps it's just because no one's being bothered to really test the laser. Yeah. But... I'm glad no one has. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember it was Golf Kid who told me about this level, so I quickly rushed him. It was one. Of, it was the first level I ever maxed, other than the obvious intro one where you max it by act. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're like the even challenge-wise, there's not much to this level. It's a bit of a jump to get the G minus minus T minus minus, but it's once you're at that stage where you're doing these challenges, that one's not going to feel over. Yeah, and G plus T plus really isn't very hard at all. Like, I would say that you would probably do it accidentally at some Yeah. 
So yeah, Karis Hell. Um, good name. Wasted on maybe a mediocre level. Yeah. I, yeah. It's yeah. just not enough variation to it. It's a cool idea of l how to use lasers, but it's executed better in... Yeah. So, B0203 uh, is... I had to read that twice. It is called Plastormer. Yeah. Yep. I... When I was just refreshing my mind for this earlier, I realized that I'd been saying this one wrong for a long time. Because to me, this had always just been like the eponymous level name for what sort of. It's like, what genre is this game? Oh, it's a. It's like, nope, it's flapped. Yeah. Um, do you remember the name of the secret level that's based on this? Offhand? I guess I can look it up. It's like right here. Rasta Disaster. Yeah, that's the one. And that is a very, very fun level. And I will say that I actually quite enjoy Plaftomer as a level. It's pretty fun. As yeah. Yeah, Plaftomer has always been one of those simple ones that has just been fun to play around in. Yeah, it's just one of the, it's another one of those levels where it's just really fun just doing the mechanics of the level to make this little free free flop. Right. Yeah, I think every aspect of it, like every um you know, every increase in difficulty from completion to G+ plus to doing the challenges. Every step of that is very enjoyable on this one. My favorite example is doing that, getting up to the second round of gold, and then getting down. You can do a little corner jump off the edge to get you up, then reward jump off, get the gold, and then if you get your momentum right, holding left, you can just not even hit the platform and just land straight back down on this. And it's just one of those things that, once you get used to it, it's easy but it just feels very smooth oh yeah like the g plus plus t minus minus challenge is just very interesting in the ways you can go about it right and it's harder than it seems while also not being incredibly hard yeah i think some of the sets of gold uh you might have been getting while well, avoiding mines anyway if you did G++. But there are, I think, at least a couple where you probably need to rethink what you were doing before. Particularly the, uh, the one in the upper middle is kind of tough to get without hitting the mines. Yeah, I would say the last two sets... I want, like, both middle sets are definitely ones where you sort of need, just because there's no normal jump if you're not doing a fancy jump, that the bottom middle ones are fairly good, because a normal jump will always just put you hitting the toggle, and it's sort of like, if you don't know corner jump mechanics, that's going to throw you in a loop. Yeah, I think the, uh... The challenges here are really the best kinds of, or at least the G plus T minus challenges, one of the best kinds of challenges where it's more than just being more precise. You really need to understand the mechanics of the game on a deeper level than you did before to be able to do it. Yeah, and they're also, they're also not too hard like there's there's still multiple ways to go about most of the so you're not sort of shoehorned into if you don't know this one trick you can't do it 
right. there's still ways to work around which I've always found as being good level design when they give you multiple methods to achieve the same outcome definitely so the last level of the episode is deconstruction set finally a name that I didn't get confused <laughs> easily my favorite level in this episode because the amount of little corner jump tricks and stuff that you can do during the high score route just make this level feel so smooth and so nice to play yeah there are definitely a lot of fun places to move around here for high scoring I don't know if it's my favorite level in the episode. I really like uh, Plaftormer. But this one, this one's definitely also a fun one. Plaftormer is probably my third favorite. I, atmosphere Recycler with the, little, with the curves, just, I have a soft spot. Oh, yeah. Like, those, those curves are just so fun, and the delayed jumps, and... Just the little different jump tricks you can do off those. I love any any level that lets me do fancy stuff off the scenery, which is why I love the corners in it. Right. And I think it's another one that we've both got high scores on, and that yes, we are point five point zero five. Oh. So we 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 both obviously enjoyed enjoyed it at some. Yeah, this is a good episode, actually. I mean, Karis Hell, you know, we said it's not our favorite, but basically every other level here has a lot of really good things going for it. Yeah, there's just, yeah, it's a very well-rounded episode, and the challenges are fun but not overly difficult there's nothing that's infuriating high scoring that's interesting the max level isn't very fun for high scoring but it's also not a hard max level yeah so you're not going to spend a long time on it when you're trying to do an episode run and yeah out, like yeah outside of carousel it's just a really really fun sort of thing to go around. Thank you, Mr. Musgrub, for being on Untitled and Plus Plus Project. It it is it's been my pleasure. I always love talking about N Plus Plus. Especially when I get interesting levels. I I'll be honest, I've been playing with the curves a lot during it. <laughs> yeah. I've been playing on product placement, just trying to get the G minus minus. Get the get the gameplay of that just to show off <laughs> just how difficult it is. Just to you... just to prove to everyone that I can do it more than one time in my life. You should have uh, got your attempts counter going so that you just <laughs> into interspersed the editing of just the attempt counter going up. Right. So then everyone's just like, oh, that doesn't look too bad. Look how easily he got that and then the attempt counter is like... S <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs> no worries. <laughs>